Alrighty folks, we've got case 640183. It is a two terabyte Western Digital hard drive. And we have the customer's drive here. They've already opened it, which is why the seals and everything are broken on it. Um, usually not something we recommend people doing, uh, but it happens. Uh, and then we have our parts drive. We've used that on some other recoveries in the past as well. These two are exact duplicates of each other. Uh, the thing that makes this case a little bit unique is the fact that this drive exhibits symptoms as though the controller board is bad. It does not spin up, does not power up, does not do anything. You apply power to it, uh, in PC3000 it shows that it's busy for a few seconds and immediately goes and errors out. And this may be something that saves or maybe answers some other data recovery technicians questions later uh, if they have a symptom that's similar to this um, where you have a drive that no matter what you do uh, you try to swap controller boards no matter what uh, the drive just does not spin up and what we found to be the issue is in cases like this is that it really boils down to the preamp chip on the head stack being shorted out and just eliminating the possibility of the drive uh, to power up so what seems like it might be a relatively simple case in the beginning you know if you were to get a job like this in you may say oh well it's just a controller board it's going to be x amount of dollars uh, and then you go in there and you start working with it and you find out wow no matter what I do it's still not working then you come to find out it's a head swap is necessary so you know that's a totally different price range then and it's something that you know could really come back to bite you which is another reason why being absolutely thorough with the diagnosis initially is critical uh, when doing this type of work. Uh, you can go through and think that something, you can think sometimes a drive has a bad set of heads and ends up being a firmware issue. You can think something where, in a case like this, you think it's a controller board and it ends up being a bad set of heads. So I'm going to show you what this drive is actually doing and then show you uh, what happens if we go through and try to use the same controller board on another drive. I'm just going to set my camera there, move this parts drive out of the way, and I'm going to remove the controller board from this drive, and I'm going to put this controller board onto our parts drive and show you that it works. I guess first thing I should do, just to show you, is to connect this and show you that it does nothing when it's powered up. So we have the drive connected now to our PC3000 system. We'll go up here and we will apply power to it. And you'll see busy and then immediately errors out. I'll power it off again and apply power again so you can see what I'm talking about. Busy, errors out drive is completely dead, not spinning up, not doing anything. So, like I said, at first glance, most people logically would think dead controller board, no big deal. Happens all the time. Probably has an issue with uh, you know, a diode, TVS diode or something like that shorting out. Um, but let me show you what this does actually. I'm put the same controller board. Okay, I'm put the same controller board onto our parts drive, and I'll fast forward through this part so you don't have to watch each screw being undone. Okay, so we have the uh, controller board moved over to our parts drive. Now this drive won't, um, it may calibrate, it may actually become ready. The more important thing is, is I want to um, show you that the controller board itself is good and this drive actually may become ready but the data won't be accessible on the parts drive so it really doesn't matter but 
just because it becomes ready doesn't mean the, dr the board is compatible. It still doesn't have the adaptives and everything else um, programmed over to it. So what I'm going to do now is apply power to, let me make sure I have it connected, yes. Apply power to that drive. And I can actually hear this one spinning up. perfectly normal, becomes ready, great. So we know the controller board is good, no doubt about that. And that leaves us with the issue being the preamp on the heads. So what we're going to do is take the heads out of this parts drive, put them into the customer's drive, and hopefully be able to get a full image and uh, all the data off of there. But again, it just kind of highlights, you know, being thorough with your diagnosis in the beginning. Uh, and if you aren't, it can really come back to, to bite you later because it's hard to go back to customers and say, it's going to be one price and then come back and say, oh, it's going to be something totally different because we misdiagnosed it initially. So anyway, uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move these heads over into here and uh, we'll get started with that process now. Okay, that was what this drive needed, was just another set of heads. Um, drive powered up perfectly, no problems at all. Um, it's actually performing extremely well. We have it connected to our deep spar imager, and uh, we have it imaging over to a uh, just a destination drive, but you can see the performance is just about flawless on this drive. So this is going to be great. This is going to be good for our customer. And if you have any questions about our services, you can visit our website at acsdata.com. You can also give us a call, 1-800-717-8974. Thanks again for watching, and stay tuned and subscribe for uh, some more videos. We have quite a few that we're working on right now. And uh, again, any questions, visit our website at acsdata.com. You can also post a comment on here, and we are happy to answer whatever we can. Alrighty, appreciate it. Have a great day.